Okay, for this video, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try reading chapters from one of my books. This book is called A Tale of Two Toes in a Hot Tub. If any of you knows me personally and you want a copy of the book, I'll give you a copy of the book. It's no big deal. Uh, we'll see how this works on the video. Where this book came out of, you know, I had some new nutrition ideas I wanted to write about and health ideas. Also, I kind of realized, you know, I don't have any marketing. I don't have any, and this is self-published, so... I knew I would hardly sell any. Um, so what I really kind of focused on for this book was just, you know, some of my male doctor friends would ask me questions. And so I wanted to write a book that they would find entertaining. Because a lot of times it's hard to maintain a person's interest in just nutrition and biochemistry and stuff. So I put a whole bunch of jokes in here. And, and the, the pattern of the joke is two patients go through the health system and one keeps learning as he goes along and um, the other one makes all the typical mistakes that an ignorant person makes and it you know if you're if you're if you're interested in medical stuff you might find it funny my, my friends found it funny my guy friends they would walk back over to see me and and tell me how funny they thought the book women i think don't find this book as funny or women are different than men when it comes to humor I think women like the idea of sex to be put on a pedestal because it's something that they can withhold from us and control us with. So a lot of these jokes are about romance and intimacy. It was sort of like I go concept, concept, joke, joke, concept, joke, concept, joke to kind of keep the person interested and not just get intimidated by reading, you know, biochemistry or something. So anyways, that's why the book works with this. And I can tell you, I know some lady doctors who read the book and they would see me like, you know, in a parking lot or something, and they would just look at me and they would start laughing at me. And I know they meant it in a funny way, but they didn't want to say anything. So anyways, I, that's the kind of feedback I've gotten from this book. Okay, so just that's what it's going to be. There's going to be tons of jokes, as much joking as there is uh, nutrition information. So to start out, uh, the Surgeon General warning is that this book may contain titillating jokes. Do not catheterize or operate while reading. Of course, that's what doctors do all day long. All right. Uh, disclosures. To, to get accepted as a textbook for high school health classes, a chapter is included on how to put condoms on bananas. Okay, because, yeah, kids take health class, and they don't learn anything about health except to get interested in sex and become promiscuous and get venereal disease. It's high school education these days. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is aging best of all? And the narrator says, to illustrate concepts for blockheads, this book contains concrete examples. And then the next is a quote from Ayn Rand. She lived from 1905 to 1982. She says, art is a concretization of metaphysics. And I love that quote. Uh, basically, and Ayn Rand, I know everybody says she's such a bitch. Yeah, maybe she is, fine. But she's also the smartest woman that ever lived. I've read a ton of her stuff. And you could think she's crazy, you could think she's a bitch, all kinds of things. But man, is she smart. Holy crap. Just read through her quotes. It's, it's obvious. All right, so, and I like this quote about the art being the concretization of uh, metaphysics. And what that basically means is what the author thinks is most important and most relevant and what is the essence of it is put into a work of art. And it's such a brilliant statement. She wrote a book called The Romantic Manifesto to Understand Art. And there's a lot of really clever stuff in there. Okay, so Plato's dialect um, dialogue format was chosen because it seems to work well for philosophical discussion. Yeah, it's the best format ever, you know, devised for philosophical discussion. We talked about Plato recently, how he wished he was a playwright. Euripides wished he was a philosopher. And uh, dialogue allows multiple opinions and viewpoints to be voiced without the author committing to one or the other. Um, and then, uh, so I said it seems to work well for philosophical discussion. Name, Adam, I know not seems. Hamlet from uh, William Shakespeare, of course. All right, so medical summaries in the actual book were highlighted in gray text boxes. Because one of the things about a book is that you got to maintain contrast, you know, to that's what writing is all about is adding contrast and emphasis to the key points. So a gray text box around the uh, specifically long uh, medical nutritional segments is a characteristic feature of this book. I'm going to use different color coding for the different characters. JAS is jazz, and it stands for Jonathan Athlete Swiftfoot. And that's a, a play, and it's a parody and a spoof on his book, a tale, of two, a tale of a Hot Tub, A Tale of a Tub. 
And so this is a tale of two toes in a hot tub because this lead character, Jazz, is trying to seduce the lifeguard, Betty. She's a beach lifeguard, so he calls her Betty the Beach. And, um, okay, so that's Jazz, the first character. He says, all I want for Christmas is to bang Betty the Beach lifeguard in a hot tub. And then AA stands for Aristotle Abelard. And that's based on Abelard was a famous uh, philosopher in the Middle Ages, the great Aristotle expert of the world in France. And he got himself into hot water himself by fooling around with one of his students, Eloise. Okay, and it became a very famous story. We'll get back to that. Um, and he was primarily an Arist Aristotelian fan of Aristotle, so I call him Aristotle Abelard. And he's going to be friends with Jazz and give him advice through the book. Okay, so then Jazz says, of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, my dream girl has to be a lifeguard. Okay, so Abelard says, why don't you just put some antifungal lotion, you know, on your foot with your athlete's foot? Jazz said, I tried that. It didn't work. Jazz, this athlete's foot is my Achilles heel. And now the next character is Chumpy Dumas or Dumbass. Uh, so chumpy dumbass, as you can guess, <laughs> a dumbass chump, um, is our next character. And he says, you think I've got problems? My girlfriend Rosa just broke up with me. Jazz, Rosa Smeller, the florist, chumpy, yeah. She said, my foot, my big toe stinks. Jazz takes a whiff of his toe. He says, wow, she's right. Chumpy, what are you saying? Abelard, Eureka. Chumpy, you don't smell so good yourself. Jazz. I know what's wrong with your toe. You've got diabetes with gangrene. Chumpy, no, I've got gout. It's under control. That's the typical thing diabetics always say. It's under control. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, Abelard, pretty soon your name's going to be Stumpy. Chumpy, I'd rather get some toes cut off than lose my balls, Mr. Abelard. So the story about Abelard, the Aristotelian philosopher, was after he banged Eloise, the father and uncle felt that he was sort of tricking them and not really going to truly marry her and be loyal to her, so they castrated him. Okay, a very famous story in medieval romantic stories. Okay, Jazz says, Chumpy, your toe is ulcerated. You must have diabetes. Chumpy, is that serious? Abelard, eh, it's no big deal. They'll just chop off your toe and then they'll... You have to stick yourself with needles every day. Then you go blind. Then your kidneys fail. Then your brain deteriorates. Other than that, it's no big deal. Chumpy, that sounds serious. What should I do? Jazz, you need to go to a foot doctor. Narrator, what could Chumpy do to improve blood supply to his toe? And this is the fundamental thing that you need to do to heal anything is improve blood flow. And I can tell you, most doctors do not know what I'm about to tell you here. This is really simple. It does not get talked to doctors. Most surgeons will not know this, okay? understanding a little bit and it's really easy this is going to take one minute it's really easy to know how to improve blood flow you want to eat a hundred percent vegan whole food plant-based diet hundred percent plants only because plants are full of potassium potassium is a vasodilator p for plants p for potassium you want um, salads like arugula, for example. They'll have the precursor nitrates that make more nitric oxide vasodilator. You make some of those just from chewing it in your mouth. That's why you don't want to be brushing your teeth. Uh, you don't want to be uh, with toothpaste, F minus toothpaste. You don't want to be um, using mouthwash or anything because you get a little vasodilator. If you go out in the sun, you get systemic vasodilator, increased blood flow throughout your body. Eat starches to satisfy your hunger. Fruits can also satisfy your hunger. Eat vegetables for nutrients. You want to walk more. That increases nitric oxide, gets it flowing. It improves venous flow, improves lymphatic flow. All those things will help your body to heal. Okay, keep the foot warm. You get more blood flow when things are warm. That's why another reason why old people like to move south uh, for retirement. I like to be warm whatever I'm doing. I know I just function a lot better. Talked about sunshine, get your sleep every night. What you're also trying to do by reducing your stress and getting your sleep is you want to put yourself into as much parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, PANS, as you can. The body heals better. When you're stressed out, you're in a sympathetic phase. It's sort of like the brake in the accelerator. Sympathetic means elevated cortisol. Cortisol is an acute stress hormone to elevate your blood glucose, but it causes insulin resistance and suppresses your immune system. You don't want that. For healing, you don't want that. Things you want to avoid. You want to avoid sodium. 
because it inhibits nitric oxide. It's a vasoconstrictor, so it decreases blood supply to your tissue. That's why potassium and magnesium are so great. They're the opposite. You want to be eating at least five or ten times more potassium than sodium, which is easy to do if you're eating plant foods. If you're getting a lot of processed fructose, that's not good either. That will increase uric acid, which leads to inhibition of nitric oxide and you know pushes you down that path towards hypertension and potentially even gout. Uh, so again, this is especially processed, industrial, high fructose corn syrup, sweetened and processed foods. A little bit of fructose in fruits is okay. Fatty liver, because that also increases uric acid, which is going to lead to some vasoconstriction. Uric acid can also function as a bridging molecule and thus make the blood thicker, higher in viscosity, and decrease oxygen delivery to your tissues. Avoid MSG foods, because MSG foods get you addicted. They taste good. It gets you addicted to bad foods. Um, and then you stop eating the good foods. Okay, uh, tobacco, that also contributes to worsening blood flow and hypoxia, lack of oxygen delivered to the tissues. Alcohol causes fatty liver, and it'll cause hyperlipidemia and predisposed to atherosclerosis, decreased blood supply to your tissues. takes more pressure for the heart to pump thick blood, you know, from a high fat diet than it does to pump thin blood, like more like water. Excessive um, endocrine disrupting chemicals, estrogen disrupting chemicals, typically all these preservatives and whatnot, they'll push you towards obesity, they'll push you towards insulin resistance, um, they can even have an immunosuppressive effect, they can decrease your ability to heal a wound. Don't wrap it too tight, avoid tight bandages, compressing the blood supply to the tissue, um, hyperlipidemia, but Animal protein supplements, too, will increase cholesterol levels. They put the body into an anabolic phase. Okay, saturated fat, of course, all meat is bad. It's all animal muscle and fat. Fish also, people think fish is good for you. No, fish stinks, okay? Fish has got a lot of mercury. It's got lots of saturated fat. It's often fried. Avoid fish. So the joke is teach a man to avoid fish, and you keep him healthy for life. Only, you know, chumps eat fish, okay, and they increase the risk of being demented. I got a separate lecture on fish and mercury and that causing cognitive impairment. And the book, the great book was uh, Mer Diagnosis Mercury by Jane Hightower, MD, internal medicine doc out in uh, UCSF, uh, California. I don't know if she's UCSF in particular, but she's out in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. All right, all oils. Vegetable oils have a lot of omega-6 fats, which are inflammatory and atherogenic. Avoid all the oils. They're all bad. What about coconut oil, Chumpy says. Abelard, nope, too much saturated fat. All oils are bad. Chumpy, what about olive oil? And then here's a quote from Caldwell Esselstyn, who's lived from 1933 to current. No oil, not one drop. Okay, and there's a good argument for you about the Esselstyn diet. Let's just take a look at Esselstyn. The guy's 88 years old. He's still skinny and fit, energetic, going around giving lectures. Okay, it's pretty good for 88. Chumpy. What about articles that say saturated fat is okay? Abelard. Other than arterial occlusion and mitochondrial dysfunction, saturated fat is good for you. <laughs> so those are like the two worst things you could have. And so part of the joke about Abelard is, you know, Aristotle basically thought he knew everything and he knew close to everything known at that time. And then Abelard was the guy to come along and know everything Aristotle knew plus his own time. So he's the expert. Try to minimize psychological stress because the catecholamines are prothrombotic and immunosuppressive. They can function as siderophores, meaning facilitate transfer of iron to bacteria, which is what bacteria need to grow, which can prevent healing. Cortisol, it's obesogenic, makes you fat. Atherogenic causes atherosclerosis and immunosuppressogenic. Just a joke, it suppresses your immune system. Abelard, life goes up and down emotionally and side to side. <clears throat> so you need to have goals, clear-cut goals on what you want to accomplish, who you are, who your role models are in order to achieve things. Because if you don't have a fixed, strong sense of who you are and what you're trying to achieve, you'll often just, you know, tread water in place and not accomplish anything. So the way this relates to healing is you'll see patients in the hospital, oh, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I need a pain medicine, and they'll just sit in bed, they won't get walking and moving, and then they get a a leg, deep vein thrombosis, toss into the lungs, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, constipated, problem after problem versus somebody who says, I need to get home. I want to be with my children. I need to get home. I have some project I'm working on at work. That person usually gets better fast. They know what they're about. They know why they're in the hospital and why they what they're trying to accomplish. And Maxwell Maltz is great on that MD. He was a plastic surgeon that wrote about his book was Psycho-Cybernetics, a really good book, very inspiring. Okay, so Chumpy. Why is this happening? Abelard, 
you need to go to a podiatrist. Go to Halix Bunyan. He's the best. Okay, so that's it for chapter one of How to Improve Blood Flow, also titled uh, Tale of Two Toes in a Tub.